Recording is in progress. We're waiting for, uh, there we go. There we go. We're all up and running now, finally. Hello, everybody. This is our little Monday get-together, the one I really like, I have fun with. All the people who join us are really swell and wonderful people, and uh, we'll uh, let them all get admitted now as we go here. And we go there, and we go there, and we admit Len. Go. Okay. Let's see here. Here comes Charlie Wallace. Okay. Uh, okay, we got Marjorie, and we got uh, Andrew Deutsch, and we got Edward Berger, and Paul. That's right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Paul Levin. And Arlene, Charlene Solis, and Lynn, and Charlie Wallace, and Francine Witt, and we probably will see more joining us as we're getting this thing going. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Did you have a nice weekend? Yeah. Yeah? Well, uh, here's what we did over this weekend. Let me see here. Um <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, I got that because uh, we went to a restaurant, which you can see us at on uh, on um, Facebook mm -hmm. and on, uh, on YouTube. We also posted it on YouTube. By the way, we did this little thing at the restaurant, right? And uh, uh, so far, uh, we're upwards to almost 900 views. Oh, jeez. Go figure. And we talk about nothing. What we did talk about yesterday was Father's Day. How many here are fathers? Would you raise your hands? Okay, so you're the sperm donors, huh? <laughs> Every chance you get. Every chance you get. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the that's the word on the street. Well, my feeling is, is that if I had any children, it's part of a bed sheet. Uh, <laughs> so. Adrian saw your video and wanted to call you and wish you Happy Father's Day. Oh, really? Oh. Isn't yeah, that yeah. he felt bad for you? Why could oh. it wasn't a father? Yeah, because I wasn't a dad. Greatest job in the world, really. Uh, yes, uh, Mandy O'Brien's joining us. There's Mandy. Yeah, what were you saying, Brian? Go ahead, finish it off. No, no, she wanted to get your phone number and call you seriously. She wanted to <laughs> really, she, she's sweet, Grace. She's, yes, yeah. Well, do I feel bad about not having any kids? How about you, Marjorie? Um, I, 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 I do because there's no one to pass anything on to. <laughs> except, I mean, we have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, um, why don't we adopt a child before we die? I think I think we're your we're your children right here. That's it oh, all. Okay, but I'm not calling you daddy. No. <laughs> well, what of your stuff, Marjorie? Would you leave Paula, for instance? She's a good friend of yours. Whoa, let me let me think about this. <laughs> <laughs> I already have two of her paintings, you know. It, yeah, I know. But uh -huh. she gave them to you. Yes, she did, and I I just love them. They're 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 on my wall over there. Is it in the view of the camera, or uh, I can make it in the view. Where the light is, it's like. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. Ah, okay, yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. Do you recognize them, Marjorie? Yeah, of course. Yeah, she helped me pick them out. Okay, because Marjorie used to paint a lot. She was a painter, and she. Why did you stop, Marjorie? I don't know. It just. It got very expensive, and I wasn't working. Well, if you want to, we got the money now. We can. Uh, we can. You know. I wonder if I should eat this happy uh, Father's Day cookie. <laughs> mm. Well, maybe maybe later. So uh, let's see here, Charlie. You're a father. Yep. Did you, uh, did you get any cards or anything from your kids or? Well, they all called me yesterday. Yeah. Oh, they all called you. Yeah. Okay. Nobody came by, but they called me. Nobody came by. <laughs> <me. laughs> Well, do, do they live near you? No. I live in Austin, yeah. 
Oh, really? They live in Austin? Yeah. Wow. And they didn't take you out to like lunch or something like that? No, no. We had, we uh, we went to dinner a week ago. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> when when my kids were at at college, um, that's a long time ago actually. But when my kids were at, at college, they had they had a joke about Mother's Day. Which is that that I would say I don't I don't care about Mother's Day. It's a Congress created it. It's a stupid thing. To, but if but but if they didn't call me, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, uh, Mandy? Your your mother. You know how was Mother's Day for you? Did the the uh... Uh, I just got texts. I mean, they. I think this generate, and I don't want to blow it off thinking trying to make myself feel better but I really do think our the generation like in maybe Charlie's kids generation too like Gen X millennials they just think they think it's dumb but some take it more seriously than others oh, I think <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's dumb I do think it's dumb I don't I definitely do not take it personally but it's like Paula oh, yeah. said you know they don't pay attention to you and you feel bad you know yeah. It's a holiday that was created to make you feel bad. Something yeah. from Hallmark. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hallmark. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't expect it. I mean, I think last year my older daughter didn't even text me. But I wished I sent a text to my ex-husband yesterday and said, I, I didn't say Happy Father's Day because he's not my father, but I said, I hope you have a nice Father's Day. And he said, thank you very much. Well, let me ask both the fathers here and the mothers here. Does it amaze you sometimes that this thing which you pushed out of your vagina or that your wife pushed out of her vagina at, yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> that was this big is now That's a That's so romantic, adult. Alex. So romantic. Sure. No, but is a full-grown adult now. I know it's crazy. Oh shoot, it my son, me. my son has gray hair. I mean, that's 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 oh. a mind. Oh wow, <laughs> it happens, mine, you know, like it, it ha have, actually happens. I can kids. hold my son in my one hand, and and he's six four and two hundred and forty pounds now. So. <laughs> so now you use two hands. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely about 20 hands. <laughs> How about you, Andrew? You had kids, right? I've got three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. How three, do you four. feel? They're my my oldest is has a 15 year old, so gonna be 16 in a couple months. Oh, so, so you, they were pretty young kids still. No, no, no. My kids are all adults. I have grandchildren. My oldest oh, grandchildren. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How old is your oldest child? 40. 40? That's a trip, isn't it? Yeah, 40, so you're, 34, you're, and 20, 26. So you're a great grandfather. No, just a grandfather. 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 My, my oldest grandkid's going to be 16 in September. Oh, is he going to be 16? Yeah, he'll be 16. So if, he, if he goes out, gets married, or doesn't get married, has a kid, yeah, he'll be a great grandfather. That's true, but he's. I don't think he's going to do that. My business manager, Gary, is a great grandfather about maybe three times over, something yeah. like that. You know, yeah, but my roommate in college is a great grandfather, but he's a country boy and they all get started earlier and earlier. So yeah, that's it's so funny to see like high school classmates that already have grandkids that are like in high school. I'm like, yeah. how? How do you have grandkids in high school? Yeah. I think in my, in my case, my older two daughters came with the marriage and my youngest is, is mine, but I got the receipts to prove they're all mine. <laughs> when i met my 40 year old she was 10 so i've been her dad for 30 years um uh, let's see francine you have kids yep nope oh. uh vernon you have kids right two yeah and uh uh john how about you two two wow sorry i was late <laughs> three demerits yeah <laughs> <laughs> I blame we it on did my that whole computer. thing. We did that whole thing yesterday on on Father's Day, about you know that we ought to have a non-parents day. You know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, but we we um, we were kidding about all that, and then um, uh, Kathleen, who Marjorie knows of, uh, wrote me wrote a little item on there and reminded me, well, you almost had a kid. And it's true because we thought for about a month that she was pregnant. 
But it turned out she wasn't, so. I was almost a parent. And I might be a parent because, you know, my first girlfriend, my girlfriend had a, a kid ostensibly by me that she put up for adoption. But I just don't feel like a father from that, you know? So it's Kathleen, uh, otherwise known as Moody? Yeah. 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 I still yeah. can't believe you gave me away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you were a pain in the ass. Deadbeat dad. We were, you were a pain in the ass, so, you know. For her. No fun. No fun. But we're happy to announce uh, Marjorie's pregnant. Which is pregnant. <laughs> it's sad they name a religion after me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's that walking on water thing going? <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if I'd met you younger and we had had some kids, if we'd be good parents together. Would we, would, we, would we make good parents? Possibly. Of course, I don't think you know whether you're going to be a good parent or not till you are. I mean, in the case of Brian, Brian, did you ever think you'd be a good parent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that screwed up my theory. <laughs> I, I, I never got a handbook on how to be a good parent. Yeah, I, I, ne I never had a good childhood. So for me, all that part comes out, you know? So so your desire to give somebody else a great childhood. Yeah. So like when I bought her a scooter last weekend, I rode it around for a couple hours before I left her. <laughs> uh, really? Yes. Uh, what do you mean by a scooter? A uh... those little three wheel, two wheels up in the front, and you know you kick, and you know like a skateboard with the handlebars, basically. Oh, I oh I see, but it's not motorized. No, 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 no. I don't want to hurt myself. Yeah. <laughs> I had some fun. I had some fun with it, and she was yelling at me because I kept writing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all, you bought it. That's what I told her. <laughs> she, 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 she said i was gonna break it <laughs> yeah that was cute though she felt sorry for us marjorie yeah not really sorry not sorry she didn't say that but you know she just said oh i want to call alex and wish him happy father's day so yeah was, yeah break. but there should be a non-parents day you know happy now in fact i was thinking about something this is gay pride month <laughs> We had uh, Black People's Months a couple of months ago, right? Uh, every month is some month, and they they have parades, the Puerto Rican Parade down Fifth Avenue, the Black Pride Parade down Fifth Avenue, the Gay Pride Parade down Fifth Avenue. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day Parade down Fifth Avenue. Do you know, as Jews, we have no parades? We're afraid to come out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> things don't turn out well, well when, when we get lined the, up. The Israel Low parade. The Israel, huh? It was an Israel uh, parade a few weeks ago. Is, well, that, an Israel parade is not a Jew parade. Well, yeah, but not a night. Don't turn out. Oh, things don't turn out well. Uh, Israel parade is a parade. They don't have a, they don't have is a parade. parade for a foreign country. You know, I like. I don't do. You, I, uh, you're, they, are you Jewish, uh, Catholic, uh, 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 Francine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're Jewish. Do you consider yourself an Israeli? No, but I mean, I don't think most of the people at the Israeli Day Parade were not Jewish. So, well, you see, but that's one of that the things where, yes, if you're an Israeli, you're probably Jewish. But if yeah. you're Jewish. You're probably okay, not, not necessarily Israeli. right. It's right. And and when the two get mixed up like that is where yeah. I have a problem. You know, right. I identify as a Jew, an American Jew. Yeah, not, oh, yeah. Not yeah. as an Israeli, because then I'd be giving allegiance to a foreign country, which is not what we're supposed to do. Wait a minute. Well, are, the are, are there some yeah. Israelis who are not Jewish? Yes, yes. there are. Yeah, yeah. yeah there are people. Yeah. Yeah, there are people who take up Israeli citizenship who come from various countries. Yeah. So there's on, Arab, there's there are Arab there Israeli. are yeah, there are plenty of of yeah. uh, of um, Islamic uh, people who are Israeli right. citizens. Right. Yeah. I just think in New York City, 
that most of the people. Would, but that, I don't know if they feel that yeah. comfortable being Israeli citizens at this point. They've been Israeli citizens for a lot for a long time. It's problematic. Um, no. I wanted I wanted to to correct something because as far as I know, there's no parades in Israel on Independence Day. What? Really? But, I guess we're I guess there are celebrations, well, but as far as I what know, I, what I was going to posit here is, yeah, I know we're very going. good at marching. You know, because oh, Alex, with, the first that. thing, the first thing we start doing if we started marching was complaining about how our feet hurt. <laughs> you want to borrow a two bus? You can march. Yeah. How long is this march? Three miles? Eh. Oi. Oi. <laughs> My feet are killing me. <laughs> but uh, we, we took a couple of marches the last two days, didn't we, Marjorie? Yeah, a big mile. Yeah. So I, I did uh, I did two miles yesterday somehow. I don't know how. Well, you walked around the apartment. Well, walking around this apartment, you can burn off the miles. Yeah. You really can. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, um, uh, and tomorrow is, I uh, tomorrow's Juneteenth, I found. Is it tomorrow? Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday is Juneteenth. <clears throat> what well, was all the celebration, Alex? What was all the celebration over the weekend? I think they were celebrating Juneteenth, but it was just a premature Juneteenth. <laughs> they had parades going and uh, street fairs going uh, for basically, for sure, we say black people, and um, uh, you know, so I mean. It, it, it was kind of like they were celebrating Juneteenth on the weekend because, you know, Wednesday is kind of an off day for June. Yeah. Well, it is Juneteenth. Yeah. Did, you, did you see over the weekend the rally at the supposed black church in Detroit for, for Trump <laughs> that had only eight black people in the building? Yeah, he rented a black church and did a rally and to hide the camera so you couldn't see the audience. I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get that. What do you say? So, so he, he rented an all black church to have yeah. a rally with the black congregation. Yeah. And they kept the cameras off the audience because there were only like eight black people in the building and they were all people from his campaign. Yeah. <laughs> There's one woman who travels around, the one who hugged him at the, at the, uh, what the hell's the chicken place? Um, uh, Chick fil A. Oh, yeah. And all, oh my God, he came to a Chick fil A and hugged the black. She's part of his campaign. She's shown up at every one of the things. <laughs> who, is, who, is this? who is this? I forget her name, but she shows oh, up to Trump. 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 Trump rented a black church to have a black rally and talk about how great he is for for the black community, oh, and no man. black showed up at at a black church. <laughs> so they hid they hid the the cameras so you couldn't see the audience, but there were people in the audience who got photos and video showing that it was a bunch of white people in a black church. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, and some someone from his campaign. Well, uh, uh, Obama never came to the hood, and it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what the, what the hell are they? I mean, he lived in the hood. Yeah, he's been in a lot of black churches in Chicago. Of course, he had, <laughs> and and Biden never been to the hood. I've I've seen Biden speaking at black churches. Of course, that Morehead one didn't go too well for him at the at the school, but yeah. he said some pretty stupid things. But Morehouse, Morehouse, did I? What did I say? Morehouse is not an all black school anymore. No, but it was It was originally a predominantly Predominantly black. And, but then I think the, a, great, the a great school too. I've worked with people who graduated from there. Didn't the government say they had to integrate it or something? I don't think so. I the think Morehouse they was one of those own. great black colleges that was open to black people. Really high uh, and, educational standards. It's a good school. And very high standards, yeah. a very good school. Yeah. yeah. And then I have to say, well, you know, you kind of got to let white people in as well. Well, why spoil the party? I don't think they ever turned away white people because I don't they think they white. ever did. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. I don't think they did. By the way, did you see? Uh, did you see um, that video of Biden with a bunch of black people and they're all dancing and stomping to the music that's going on? And Biden is like not He's really just standing party. still. Yeah. Huh? He, he was dancing still. Yeah. 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 Not not a good image. Hey, there's. Well, a he doesn't want to do like he doesn't want to do like this, like Donald. 
The double yeah. masturbating, the double <laughs> masturbation dance. Right. The double <laughs> masturbation. He's like, oh God, I have no swag. I'm, you but know, I'm like a ever since a lot of uh, people have been joking about this, started with Jimmy Kimmel and metamorphosized it to uh, John Stewart and a lot of other people are all using the thing about he looks like he's jerking off to yeah Bill Maher nope. does it too that he Bill Maher started it that he yeah. stopped doing it no no I don't think he stopped he hasn't he? stopped oh good it reminds him too much of his youth of what <laughs> it reminds him too much of his youth yeah. <laughs> I apologize sir. well <laughs> <laughs> the dog <out. laughs> great thing about uh, about uh, uh, what do you call it uh, zoom uh, is that all the different places people are from here today you know charlie's in texas vernon's in kentucky uh out there in, in the uh novato california is uh uh, 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 John Ewing, and hey, from Florida, Florida, yeah, it's Albert Reynoso. For the time being, yes, well, yeah, time. and we have we have we have Mandy from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I'm trying to think a few far uh, uh, in Wisc uh, Ohio. We got Paul Paula and me, and then of course uh, there's. Uh, there's our good friend uh, Edward Berger. That's right. Who's from uh, Flushing? Flushing. Yeah. Or, a lot of Chinese live there, and they've changed the name to Flushing. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we have uh, we have, and then uh, uh, Charlene, you're from California. Oh, yeah. And Brian's from California, and uh, Len's from California. So. But a lot of people, Andrew's up there in your Wisconsin, is it? No, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, just Cleveland, up the street Ohio. from Paula. Selling, selling smokes, if you want one. Need hard pack, soft pack? <laughs> now, what, is, what is that? Your, your... My new job, I'm working at 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see some ID if you want some smokes. You know, I, what always got me was, did you ever notice the 7-Elevens at the door? There's a strip. And it's oh, your uh, height. Your height. Yeah. It isn't there for your convenience to see how tall you are right now. And so they can tell yeah. the cops how tall the guy was that robbed them. Robbed them. <laughs> Why do you have a problem with that? It's a good idea. Yeah. Well, of course it's a good idea. I wanted to put a scale in so that they can determine whether you're allowed to buy cheese balls <laughs> or not. <laughs> Contribute to the delinquency of, of guys like me. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so, you know, it was, it, uh, it, it, everybody seems like they had a nice weekend. It was so beautiful here in New York. This here too. You know, when it gets to be good walking weather in, uh, in the beginning of spring, and that's good walking weather. Okay. In, in the beginning of spring, oh, here comes Kevin. Um, uh, in, in, uh, the spring, uh, it only lasts for a few days before it gets too hot. You know, yesterday was getting too hot, right, Marjorie? The rest of the week, it's going to be in the 90s. It, it, we're not going to walk the rest of the week. Are no. we? Here, here too. Huh? Here, too, it's going to be in, in the 90s. It's going to be nasty. <laughs> really? They said, I think Wednesday is going to be, what What they say, Paula, 97, 98? Oh, no, please. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah, it's uh, it's in the high eighties today. I don't, or is it in the, uh, here? I in, took the dog for a twenty four hour walk, so I could get it all done. I don't have to do it now for a few weeks. <laughs> today, right now, it's eighty six. What's temperature down there in uh, in Florida? In the nineties somewhere. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's ninety in Akron today. No. Yeah. Are you you talked about maybe moving out of Florida? Uh, I think about it all the time. Wouldn't blame you. What don't you like about it? I don't blame you, Albert. <laughs> uh, that it's Florida. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hated living there. You know something? Florida isn't bad. It's the people that are. Hmm. There are some that are unpleasant, yes. Yeah. Party with your governor. Yeah. 
Well, now they legalize those bump stocks again, so you can. Yeah, right. No, don't do that. You know, I mean, I I lived in Florida for a short time, and it was miserable. But I can't say that it wasn't a nice city. You know. I mean, Florida is a very, very nice, beautiful city. Yeah, Miami, Miami, rather Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Florida is a very nice state. Uh, a lot of nice places to live and do things, but it's just the politics and the whole nature of it. It becomes kind of ugly. I don't know what it is, but are you right, feeling Texas. that living there? Am I what? Are you feeling that ugliness living there? I feel it everywhere I go in, in America. You know, when I go back to New York, I feel the same thing. Really? It's not exclusive. Well, how dare you come stay well, with us? Yeah, well, I don't feel your ugliness. You have, you have your own kind of ugliness, but I, we're talking about the Florida type ugliness. Yeah, yeah. Well, he comes in here once a year to stay and remind me of my ugliness. <laughs> Never. <laughs> where do you think you'd want to live albert i don't know i haven't thought well that depends what the situation is in uh in six months or so oh yeah then i'll let you know whether it involves a passport or not <laughs> <laughs> we'll join you yeah, yeah. I, I checked mine to make sure the date was good yeah but you see i would i would say to marjorie let's just leave here and go live in someplace like spain or Italy or whatever, get a nice little place somewhere and rent it and live there for the rest of our lives. But the thing is that we are not citizens, and so therefore every three months or so, you got to leave, right? You can't stay. No, huh? Not if you're in retirement age. You can apply to stay in lots of countries. It, it, and here, Costa Rica's nice too. You mean yeah. if you're if you're retirement age? If you're in retirement age, you can apply for retirement visas in lots of countries where you're allowed to just stay for extended. Is, period. is it called a retirement visa? And each country has their own name for it, but yeah, but there's for, it's a visa for retirees. We should look into that, Marjorie. Well, you can, Alex. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, move, we'll move to touch. By all, by all means, have a go at it. We'll move to Siena so you can finally see it. Go somewhere where they're more rational, like, you know, Palestine. You'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Tel Aviv. Let's go take up an apartment in Tel Aviv. Go I on. hear you can, uh, you can buy real estate cheap in Gaza. What? Yeah. I hear you can buy real estate cheap in Gaza. It's cheap Gaza? to renovate. Oh, yeah. They've already done the demolition. It, it's a fixer-upper. Right. It's a fixer-upper. <laughs> hey, did you guys hear about the guy predicting uh, World War Three tomorrow? Oh, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow? Is tomorrow? tomorrow? I just there's checked a... my calendar. It's not. It's not on there till till next Thursday. There's an Indian. <laughs> there's an Indian astronomer who says that the planetary stimulus to trigger World War Three is strongest tomorrow. Okay. I don't think you could call him an astronomer. Astrologer. <laughs> well, you it said he's put the emphasis on the astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> Kushal Kumar. So, anybody see any great movies lately? I, uh, I, I watched a documentary about the Brat Pack. Oh, yeah. yeah the, Marjorie didn't want to watch it. Was it good? Um, it it kind of wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Um, it was a little slow. I mean, it was just, and it didn't actually seem. I kind of almost felt sorry for Andrew McCarthy because it's almost like he really has a lot of unresolved anger about it. Like, yeah. wow. well, about the, the, the anger about it might be that he didn't become anything. Yeah. I mean, and they didn't, they didn't talk, they didn't get to Molly Ringwald didn't want to be in it. And Judd Nelson. Um, and even, they didn't even mention Michael Anthony Hall. I think that's the same. It's not Anthony Michael, either Michael Anthony or Anthony Michael. It's Anthony, Anthony Michael. Michael Hall. Thank you. They didn't even mention him, which I thought was strange because I felt like he was part of it. All the people that kind of appeared in those movies by a huge, right? Hughes. Yeah. He talked to him and he taught, he even, even, he even ended up interviewing the guy that wrote the article and the, the guy that wrote the article and kind of doubled down. I mean, he, he kind of apologized, but not yeah. really. He doubled down and defend, you know, basically defended himself. The, the Gene Wilder documentary is really good. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Marjorie didn't want to watch that either. <laughs> I certainly don't want to watch the Brat Pack. But did you well, that was just, nice. that was my generation. I mean, like, that was exactly, I was in the age of those movies. Yeah. So I was just interested in seeing it, just, you know, to see what all they had to say. But it, like I said, it ended up kind of being yeah. kind of nothing, you know. We watched a, a great, just got finished watching a, a great documentary that I paid for, actually. I wanted to watch it on Ricky J called Deceptive Practices. Mm -hmm. And it's a great movie about sleight of hand magic. Excellent. Excellent. And, Mar and Marjorie thought she wouldn't enjoy it at all. And you enjoyed every minute of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then um, uh, what did I, I watched? Marjorie wouldn't watch this either. So I had to watch it on my own. Anybody seen Monkey Man? No. I've heard of it. Saw, no, uh, haven't. You haven't? No, my son. It's a Netflix, right? Yes. Uh, no, no. I saw it. Well, it's on Peacock, but it's oh. Oh, you saw it as well, right? What did you think? I was not impressed. You were not. I was. No, there was. I mean, it was nice action movie, but there wasn't much to it. The plot was. Eh, I think it had a bit of heart to it. Yeah. No, I and I thought it was brilliantly directed. Yeah, he did a good job. Guy, uh, what's his name? Who did the uh, Slumdog Millionaire? Dev Patel. Oh, Dev Patel. Dev, yeah. Uh, wrote and directed this film, and it. I thought it was very good. Uh, but then again, what does Albert know about movies? You know, <laughs> that's, true. that's true. I watched. Uh, I, I watched uh, the new season of uh, Dave Letterman. Mm. Uh, and yeah. I've seen two episodes, and they're both really good. The first one is Miley Cyrus. I was about to mention that one. Yes, I well, like that. Marjorie one. wouldn't watch that either. Go ahead. It was good. <laughs> I turned did it off for twenty it? minutes. Did you watch the other one, Paula? The one with Charles Barkley. And that's that's what I was going to say. You know, Charles Barkley was was uh, um, in the, uh, at, he was he played in the Seventy Sixers when I was in Philly. So, you know, like I, and I remember him very well. It was a really good interview. Yeah. That was, those two episodes were really good too. I enjoyed those. He's really good at what he does. Well, when I watched it's on YouTube. I mean, Letterman. I, I, that was on YouTube and I really recommend it. And Marjorie would probably agree because I showed her parts of it is the interview that Piers Morgan did with Kevin Spacey. Yes. Really? And you come out feeling really bad for this guy. I just finished House of Cards too, and I felt like the last season of that show where they just basically had to just pretend like they like, yeah, wrote them out. Yeah. yeah, and I want to watch that interview because I literally just finished that whole series. I'd watched he, the whole. Series. He talks about it. And he says, "I don't understand it. I've been found not guilty in a in a in a uh, you know criminal trial. I found not guilty." Uh, uh, in a in a civil suit, he said, "All the charges against me are gone. I have won every everything there, and still nobody will hire me." Yeah, yeah. How long yeah. has it been? What about a year, year and a half since all that stuff? No, well, when finished that up came down, yeah, yeah. Seven yeah. Years. it's been seven years for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but since he was found, but since it was since he was found not guilty and all that, all that stuff finished up. It's only been a couple of years, maybe a year and yeah. a half, right? Yeah, but you would think that somebody would say, "Okay, well, on, do a movie for it." it yeah, look at what happened with Billy Bush. He was, you know, he was off for quite a while, and then after about, and he didn't even do anything. Year, he didn't even do anything. But well, what about Mel Gibson? He's back. He was gone for he about a year. Something. Yeah, Mel Gibson too. It took him a year or so after everything settled down to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, but I mean, he just said that it, he <laughs> just felt that he was to begin with in the very beginning. Netflix dropped him from House of Cards. He talks about it. Yeah, and he said they dropped me from House of Cards even before I was found guilty of right. anything or even yeah. charged. Yeah, you know, he said. Yeah. Uh, what and, and yet today with uh who's the comedian uh um uh, oh what, what's the comedian's name marjorie dave dave chappelle he said with dave chappelle they went to the mat for him yeah. you know 
and he was a, he was they were yelling at him about being a, a you know homophobic and everything else and they didn't throw him to the wolves he said i don't understand it i just had a couple of accusations made against me and all of a sudden i don't do i'm not house of cards anymore what was it he was um accused of of soliciting a minor is that uh, yeah that was anthony rapp who happens to be an official in my union now um which i i think because of what he did what jeff stein is calling me yeah i don't know what to do with your phone uh, 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 oh yeah. uh, anyway trying to get on yeah uh what was i going to say uh, um where about Anthony Rapp or something? Though. Oh, Anthony Rapp. That was the kid who was 14. That He said when he was 14, he was raped by, you know. He, Kevin Spacey wasn't even where he says he was, so he could have done that. In fact, John Barrowman, who you might know as Captain Jack from Doctor Who, testified on Spacey's behalf, saying he was at his around him at that time, and he wasn't at home. You know, it was just a complete lie. And Rap wound up having to pay him $40,000 as some kind of payment for all the time and trouble and so on. So, yeah. I mean, he got completely, that was completely thrown off. And then they were like, oh, I know, five charges or something against him in England when he was at the old Vic. And he went <laughs> to trial on that. Every one of them got thrown out. He got found not guilty on all charges. So why isn't he working? Well, he must, like, look at Will Smith. Will Smith is back, and, like, nothing happened. Yeah, but we saw what Will Smith did. Yes. But, okay. But I, he can probably he can probably bring in the money, though. But I think that's probably maybe oh, the Kevin difference. Kevin Spacey was huge box office. That wasn't yeah, sexual. Was. That wasn't great, sexual yeah. either. Great actor. And the movie just came oh, out it wasn't with a him sexual in it. Thing. The movie true. just yeah. came yeah. out with him in it, and it is yeah. big box office. Yeah. Well, look at Louis C.K. I mean, same thing. Louis C.K., who I know, and he got trashed. really bad about, you know, oh. still not able to earn the kind of living he once earned. He does very well in the clubs. He's a comedian, if you're familiar with Louis C.K. Yeah. So uh, he produces his own stuff and sells it and makes money, but not like he used to. Doesn't make the kind of no, money. but he get, doesn't have TV shows. He had about yeah. five TV shows on on the. On yeah. the yeah, and they're not on TV, but he on his site there's things that he's done produced. But yeah, but I, again, he's he's blocked out. I mean, I, at the end of the day, Kevin Spacey had the unfortunate thing of being accused of doing that gay. You're right. You're yeah. right. It's, yep. it's because of that 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 he's been yeah. been ostracized because he the reach well, over cost him. He said he yeah. never came out of the closet. What they said was because he didn't over. want he didn't want his sexuality to get in the way of his of his career which basically it could have at that time and yeah. uh, he said when this happened he said i came out as gay just to say hey you know yes i am but you know he said and i he says i may have done some some bad behavior in the in days past he, he said he but who who, who hasn't when they were younger you know uh, and uh, but he said that there was this one guy they did this documentary about you know the truth behind Kevin Spacey and it was all these terrible people coming forward and uh, going after him and saying he did this to me and he did that to me and they brought it up in this uh, in this discussion long, long interview with Piers Morgan and he started batting aside every one of the people who spoke on that documentary he said, "There's this one guy in the documentary who says he was at a, he was watching The Longest Day with Kevin Spacey, and he was jerking off to the D-Day scene." Oh, please! Oh, he said, and then he grabbed my hand and tried to put it on his penis to for me to help him. And Spacey said, "I've never even seen The Longest Day," <laughs> you know, uh, and and then he said, "This guy." up until a few years ago, was still writing me after that incident supposedly took place, saying, hey, we got to get together soon. How are you doing? You know, and he just batted all these people aside. They did this, It's I think it's about a two-hour documentary on Kevin Spacey that's a complete and utter lie. 
Uh, you, uh, this interview was just, but Marjorie even agreed. It was, it was really breathtaking. That's annoying. It yeah. sounds like those Salem witch trials. I mean, it's, it's at that yeah. level. Well, they, they, they akin, made it akin to the McCarthy hearings, you know, and the, uh, and the, and the House on American Activity Subcommittee hearings, in which just being accused made you a pariah and you didn't work like. Uh, uh, Meanwhile, wasn't Roy Cohen homosexual? Yeah. 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 How about that? How yeah. about that? And they were going after homosexuals in the army in the House on American Activity Subcommittee, uh, and, excuse me, uh, on the uh, the McCarthy hearings, yeah. uh, which were different from the House on American Activity Subcommittee. They were the same kind of thing, but they were different uh, things that were going on. And they were going after homosexuals in the army. And the fact was, sitting right to the left or the right of uh, the left of uh, of, of McCarthy is Roy Cohn, his yeah. aide de camp, you know. Well, um, what's his name? Anthony Fauci was was uh, uh, um, excoriated because he uh, um, was trying to uh, to help the, the the people with AIDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anthony Fauci, a guy who's if you saw those congressional hearings, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, I now call Marjorie my wife. Marjorie Taylor Miller. I now call my husband <laughs> Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lively okay. dinner table. <laughs> Good one, Marjorie. Let's go I, to Alex's I, house I, for dinner. I saw, I, I, oddly <laughs> enough, I've become a little bit of a fan of Piers Morgan only because he is a, a re, unrelenting interviewer, you know? And he was interviewing Marjorie Taylor Greene. Really? Oh, Boy, is she a piece of work. She wouldn't shut up. She wouldn't let him try to ask questions because he was going to ask good questions. He was asking her, you know, why would you talk about Jewish lasers causing forest fires in California? I never did that. And then he plays the clip of her saying, yeah. you know, and she goes, well, that's that's a kind of thing, a kind of false information. All you press people try to do with me, blah, blah. And it was just I watched it and I said, this woman is the sickest human being I've ever seen in Congress. Well, careful. she's learned from the best. She'll throw a peach tree dish at you. Be careful. What peach tree dish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a, she's up north from um, from Mandy. Yeah. From Mandy, yeah. uh, and she's in she's in a if I'm not mistaken, Mandy. She's Marjorie Taylor Greene is in this uh, her, her constituency, or actually in a part of the state that are a bunch of assholes. Yeah, it's in the northwest corner of Georgia. It's not anywhere near the city of Atlanta. It's no. uh, near no. Canton. It's like in the corner, like near Tennessee. A lot yeah. of trees. Yeah, just by, by Chattanooga. Alabama, no, you know, just no. kind of up in that corner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Rural. Rome, I think that's Rome. Rural. Yeah. A lot of trees, animals. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Margaret Taylor Green. Pretty much. That part at the Ray, congressional Ray hearing, at the congressional yeah. hearing um, a bit. she said, I'm not going to call you Dr. Fauci. You're Mr. Fauci. Yeah. What an asshole. I saw that. You know, the thing is that I that bothers me about it most of all where Fauci is concerned, here's a guy that over the years has had an empirical reputation for saving lives. Yeah. I mean, he was there during the AIDS crisis trying to Sure, that and do whatever had to be done. He, you know, uh, the, the AIDS pandemic, or the uh, rather the uh, uh, what do you call it, pandemic? Epidemic. Uh, our COVID. pandemic. COVID. The uh, uh, the COVID. 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 Yeah, COVID pandemic. Um, he Zika. Was, how many lives did he save? He saved my life. You know. Uh, and, you you and probably saw them. able to save. Uh, of the life of, uh, of of Andrew there because I saw that there were those uh, viruses just hanging around in back of him. <laughs> the soccer balls. It got me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the best, was, somebody the best wanted to say that. something. Somebody had their hand up. No, I was just saying. Did you see uh, the the Sunday Sunday uh, morning had Fauci on? Yeah. Yeah. And he was explaining a lot more stuff that people just didn't understand about that virus that was going on. And it, 
It made a lot of sense. He, there was a lot. Of, we he, could still drink bleach. Uh, I mean, I yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I don't know. He, I, I don't. I don't remember his explanation, but he did give an explanation for why the virus didn't come from the Wuhan clinic or right because a virus has to mutate over many 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 years and it can't mutate that quickly and they you were saying that it was you can't create an yeah they were saying that they were manufacturing it and it can't happen yeah yeah so, well, so it probably didn't come from there you know no he thinks you know just something i think the happened. fact that it came from it was a wet out of market, control a wet market in china is one of the best explanations <clears throat> but uh, anyway um um but yeah, I, I I I feel sorry. I feel sorry for people who are accused of stuff who never have had a chance to to make their peace with it, you know. And he said, you know, he, uh, Spacey said that one of his biggest mistakes was the statement he made after the Anthony Rapp accusation because they felt compelled to come out with some kind of an answer, and that he just wasn't satisfied with the answer that he gave. And he felt it just set up too many people to criticize him further. But and he he admitted to his own personal mistakes and his foibles and problems. Uh, and uh, he, but he said, "I'm not going to admit the stuff that I didn't do." Yeah, and it it's uh, you really should watch it. It's very compelling. Is that on Netflix? It's on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, just look up uh, Piers Morgan and uh, and. Kevin Spacey, and it'll come right up. It's about an hour and 40 minutes. And it's, a, you know, as a guy who does interviews, I thought it was a very good interview, you know. Right, my good interviewer, Albert? You're up there. <laughs> I'm a, I'll take that. I'll take that. Now I'll you have to give me a follow-up question. See, if you were a good interviewer, <laughs> you would have done that. Up where? I rescind my comment. What, why do you rescind your comment, Albert? Well, now that's better. That's a little better. Okay, good. Uh -huh. No follow up. <laughs> well, Alex, what would you do with a Marjorie Taylor Greene? How, how do you handle somebody like that? You know, I don't think I'd want to interview her because really you can't. She she starts trying to. You can't win. Well, what she starts to do is try, tries to fill the time with herself hoping that if she fills enough of that time with herself, you won't have enough time to ask her questions. Right. Yeah. And and I felt very sorry for Piers Morgan because he couldn't get her to shut up. The interview is only 12 minutes long. It might have been longer had he been not been able to make her shut up. You know, he wanted to have one minute to be able to ask her a question. And, and, and they know how much time they have and they know how much time they can strategically they try, take up. Yeah. They try to play out the clock. Yep, they all do it. Yeah. 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 They, they should do what they're going to do in the debate and cut her mic at some point. Right. <laughs> well, I have Shut another up. question to ask. Mic off. Yeah. Well, the, the debate coming up between Trump and Biden, they are going to cut their mics when mm -hmm. The person who's an, and not answering the question is, is uh, the, it, they're going to cut off their mic. Wasn't that a requirement? But it really is. It's a preemptive thing against Trump because he just can't shut up and interrupt, stop interrupting people. I, Wasn't that I, a requirement from Biden? Yeah. Yeah. I, I still yeah. don't think the debate's going to happen. I think Trump's going to do this cognitive test bullshit and drug test. He's not going to do those. I'm not going to the debate because he knows he's he knows he's not going to come off well. Well, he's not really think the, that. I do. I think, the heard that. I think, hear I think the there's a, a good Trump chance that about? I think there's a good chance it's not going to happen. That Trump's going to say, oh, no, if he's not drug tested, I'm not going. Or if he's not doing a cognitive test, I'm not. I think, Trump I think he's going to come up said, with. Trump the other day talked about the cognitive test that he took with Dr. Ronnie Johnson. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Who's Ronnie Johnson? Right, right. Yeah. God's name was Ronnie. The Jackson. guy was sitting there too. Yeah, that's Johnson. The, Ronnie's the name of the Johnson that he's dancing with. <laughs> he's dancing with Johnsons. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I think we're all going to be there wanting to watch it and see what happens. But uh, I'm just going to record it and watch it later. Yeah, yeah. 
Because I mean, bad I, move, bad move. Always watch live with Trump. Always watch live. You really? never know what's going to happen. True. Yeah, but yeah, World War Three, World War Three could start tomorrow. Yeah, he, he may Mike. walk up to Biden and punch him in the face. You, you never know. My question is, how many times, uh, how much of that debate is going to be taken up with Trump complaining about his lot in life? Mm-hmm. You yeah, know exactly. As opposed, he's going to complain about that mute and everything else. He's going to complain about all him getting up and walking around. The temperature it's going to be cold. It's bad. You know, whatever. It's cold no, in but, here. But so what? It'll make him look bad. That's no, okay. but, he, but, he, but how much of it will be taken up with him saying, "I was robbed in New York. That was a <laughs> a, a witch hunt." You know, blah blah blah. I mean, and there will be Biden trying to give real answers like here's what I want to do for the economy and here's what needs to be done with the whatever. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's going to be a very unproductive debate on 50% of the time. If, if you read any of this project, uh, 2025. Yeah. I saw about it last night on uh, 60 minutes, wasn't it? No, no it was on, on oh, John no, Oliver. John Oliver. Yeah. yeah I, I read it a bunch of it before i didn't know he was going to do this the show on it if you read that thing it will chill your blood of what they're planning on doing well this is what john oliver said this is basically the agenda for trump it's it's the playbook to destroy the entire constitution in in our country yeah it just it's so funny because it follows the path if you've ever read read ain rind or and ran yeah yeah if if you've ever read about you know the 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 government gets taken over the, the leftist government gets taken over by incompetence and cronies and and every it's that story but it's the right wing doing it yeah the book the book is a this 2025 is a direct parallel to in her bizarre universe how and now it's a reality it could be real because that's what they're planning on doing huh. it's, and this in the movie civil war if anybody's seen that i saw that it's an interesting parallel to that i I watched that we watched that did you watch it or yeah Uh, it's pretty interesting it was different you know it it it, but it's kind of a lightweight film it was but it made you you think i want an uncivil war Mm. well you know but they also said the civil war was what started by arizona and and california yeah california texas and where was it north North Carolina? carolina texas yeah that was the uh, the um, well, why would they call it the, the the they were the the instigators yeah, of all why, places. Why would California secede from the union? That's what yeah. I didn't get. They weren't a state yet. And they were going by, through Charlotte to get to D.C. I to can understand why Texas would, and I can understand yeah. South Carolina yeah. why they would, yeah. but I couldn't understand why California was. Yeah, it was it was kind of made you think about what the hell was going on, but yeah. The last, the last by scene the way, was pretty interesting. By the way, Mandy's off to teach her class. Yeah, it looks mm-hmm. like. <laughs> She's waving to see her. <laughs> Y'all have a good week. Good seeing you, Mandy. You too. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm going to head off, too. I'm going to go start making jam. Can't we went wait, and picked... can't, you, can't you wait six minutes? Yeah. No, I went, we went and picked Alala berries today to make some more jam for you. Oh, Okay. So right. we're down there boiling uh, a lala berries, and we're about ready to start canning. So I, I never heard there. of a lala. Did you ever hear of a lala berries, Marjorie? No. <clears throat> well, the jam you may you not anymore it. because we heard today that they may be uh, going extinct because of the climate change. So they may be go- going extinct. Some, so, some bearded yeah. dude we picked gotta, them up. We got to try some of that <laughs> jam he sent us, Marjorie. Yeah. It's supposedly very good and made with his own two hands. And I trust he was. They're even stained. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I trust him, his hands being clean, too. Okay, yes. well, go do, take care of All righty. See you all me. later. Okay. Um, now, down in Florida, how you, uh, everything's good down in Florida for you. You got a swimming pool there, right? Where you are? Talking to me, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, got, got a swimming pool, sure. Got air conditioning too now. <laughs> Great. You didn't have air conditioning? Of course I had air conditioning. <laughs> what do you make it look? It seemed like uh, there's a, it's a whole different world down here. It's the, the same house, the the world house as you, you got up there. The house you bought has central air conditioning, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. 
So does my car, believe it or not. And we got the <laughs> windows that go up automatically now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, to begin with, I oh. would never have a car in that part of the country that doesn't have air conditioning. I don't think I know anybody that does. When I lived in Texas originally. Did they still make cars without air conditioning? <laughs> when I first moved Probably to Texas, not. cars didn't have air conditioning. And if you wanted to get air conditioning... You bought air conditioning, and it was this thing they installed in the car that was right under the dash. Yeah. You remember those, Charlie? Yep. I always that. bought cars that had air conditioning, though. Yeah, but now you buy any car, it comes with air conditioning. So yeah, they used to, used to have places, the aftermarket air conditioning place, they put an actual air conditioner in your system. When I, yeah. in 1988, a buddy of mine bought a, Volkswagen that didn't have air in Florida and had to pay to have it put on. Yeah. You know, the car real cheap and he took it in and had air added to it. So it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. The air conditioners weren't that expensive, but they were, you know, and I don't think they were as efficient as the ones that you have that are built into the car now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so has it come to this? We were talking about air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> We just we just put bags of ice in the window and open the window. Well, in, the, in this apartment, <laughs> in this apartment house, you have to put your air conditioners in the windows, but we only have them in the, in the back of the apartment, the front of the apartment. We don't do it, you know, because if I were to turn on every air conditioner that you could possibly have in windows in this apartment at the same time, I blow every fuse in the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because nothing's wired well in these old buildings, you know. Um, the building's 124 years. Wow. 124 years. Sure. You're right. 124 Shit. years. Old. My um, house didn't have central air conditioning until 2002. It was built in 1937. And when we moved into it, it had a huge air conditioner sitting in the front room. Did, did, you, put in, did you put in central air conditioning? Yes. Yeah, but I had to upgrade the electrical service in order to do that. See, it only had see? A amp service. Because you yeah. turn on that air con that out it, the air conditioner is outside the building, right? The heat pump yeah. is outside the building. And the then condenser. The heat yeah, inside. and then it goes all through the inside. But the city would not let you put in central air conditioning. They would not issue a permit unless you had at least. A no, if I own this if I own this apartment, I put in central air conditioning. Yeah. I also do something about the electricity. <laughs> yeah. I always have to be careful about, you know, turning. Well, ask Albert. He's been here. He can't turn on that air conditioner until I turn this one off. Now, it might not blow, but I ain't taking the chance at one o'clock in the morning. You have to go down the basement. You have to go down yeah. the basement. Yeah. And you I can't. Breakers or fuses? Well, you see, it's supposed. I have breakers, and you'd think the breakers would go, but they don't go. The fuse in the basement goes, hmm. you know. Huh. Uh, and I can never understand why that was, because shouldn't breakers go first if you have them in the apartment? No. Huh? Not, if, not if the fuse in the basement's a lower a lower rating than your breakers. Yeah. Also, got... also, fuses are are a faster response time. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I don't. I'm a. I'm a Jew. What do I know about? <laughs> uh, to me, I I can't say anything. Wait, wasn't Jesus an electrician? <laughs> I, I, mean, thought he was a, I thought he was an HVAC guy. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, did Brian leave us? I guess he did. Yeah, Brian left yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, he has things to do. He has a lot. I heard he, I heard he died on crossed wires. <laughs> Oh, oh. Uh, very too soon. Good. What? Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Yeah. Well, if you get a chance, go watch the Spacey interview. It's really, it's really compelling. If you, the Andy breaks down crying because uh, Piers Morgan says to him, "So where are you living now?" And he said he started crying, and he said, "I'm not living anywhere. They just uh, foreclosed my home." Jeez. Um, and wow. well, how much money do you have? And he says, nothing. He and he says, owes millions. And I still owe millions to the lawyers. Wow. wow. You know, so uh, I and, and he started crying, and and you really felt for him. You know. Let's start uh, a GoFundMe page for him. 
I think somebody should, yeah. you know, if anybody deserved it, it's him. And I heard he was a terrible guy, but stories are that a lot of people came to his defense who were, you know, apparently he wasn't a bad guy. You know, he said that, the, in fact, Elton John testified at his trial in England uh, and wasn't even asked to, but did it because he felt compelled to. You know, so anyway, it, it's a it's a great it's a great interview. Uh, and I never thought I'd say that about Pierce Morgan, but yeah. Yeah, I hate that guy. Yeah. Um, anyway, hey, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Oh, this is my mic. I don't want that noise. Uh, it's great having you here. Been a really nice, it's, it's been a fun hour for all of you. Yeah. Uh, always. Always. And, and you guys make it terribly fun. And we had a lot of people here today. We had, uh, what? Uh, the 15. 15, 15 yeah. yeah a lot of people and uh i appreciate marjorie for being here what's for dinner tonight marjorie i don't know i'll tell you in a minute okay whatever was in the refrigerator that didn't go out of date right <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah yeah uh, thank you uh very much to uh, uh andrew deutsch for joining us today as well as paul 11 who dear sweet person who we love dearly and uh Char uh, 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 charlene uh, uh, solas uh, out there in california thank you so much we always appreciate you being here len lafrisco great having you here charlie wallace terrific francine good to have you back hope the poetry is going good <laughs> vernon dutton thank you for being here uh john ewing say hello to everybody up in nevado that's and, right uh, finally uh albert Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen uh, my best friend in the whole world right Re albert don't you forget it yeah and finally <laughs> finally to sign us off today with the immortal words that he always does here is edward berger to say that's all folks goodbye everybody <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, bye-bye.